Hi everyone, welcome again. I'm Satya and you are in stage two of API Days Hong Kong 2021. This is the last segment of the conference and we have three interesting talks around developer experience. As the first speaker, we have Rosemary Misser, the product manager at Zero, to share her story with her very first API. She calls herself a product geek. Welcome, Ross. Hi, Satya. Thank you. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. I think in Melbourne, the timing is not too bad. Yeah, luckily, it's a early evening for us. Yes. So. Uh, Without further delay, you have the next 20 minutes on stage, followed by five minutes question. Yeah, the stage is yeah. all yours. Thank you. Hi, everyone. This is Rosemary. I am from uh, Melbourne, um, and I work here with the product team in Xero. For those of you who don't know Xero, Xero is a cloud accounting software company, um, and I work at the Melbourne office, um, and we are spread across um, all over. And today I thought I'll share with you uh, the experiences that I've had in the API space. Um, going back to my days, um, software engineering days, uh, where I've coded myself uh, and worked a lot in SOAP and REST and gone through you know, different roles. And I thought today I will share with you some myths um, and anti-patterns that I have observed um, working across different industries, different domains, different countries. So a little bit about me, I worked in engineering, research, uh, and I also lecture, um, and I worked in the startup arena, which exposed me to the design aspect, product aspect. Um, and so um, I thought, why not be here today to you know, share with you um, the myths and anti-patterns from a product point of view, from the process point of view, as well as from the design point of view. And so um, if you are on that journey uh, to getting your first API out, or you're writing that first endpoint, then um, I'm sure you'll find this talk insightful. Um, and uh, because I am here talking to you about uh, the experiences that I've had when we started off on that first API journey. So to begin with, um, the first anti-pattern, APIs are an afterthought. Now, when I say afterthought, most companies today, um, or at least uh, in the last decade, have been following a very traditional business model. When I say traditional business model, all that I'm trying to say is they, we focus, or we have been focusing on building capabilities which will solve business needs. So we think of APIs as a part of the application development process. Right. So we want to change. We want to bring about this uh, digital transformation. And hence, that idea has changed in the last few years. We are now rethinking and um, rethinking our strategy uh, by looking at areas in which we can talk about API. So in short, have an API enabled strategy. And this is going to be very different to API focused companies like Twilio and Stripe, where uh, their revenue comes only from creating and selling APIs. Okay, so that's altogether a different story. So talking about these type of companies, you've got to start looking at where exactly can you um, bring in APIs. So you might have, say, internal teams wanting to you know, build a few applications, and they might rely on other teams or other products within the organization where, say, for instance, you're relying on the data. So you might want to expose that data internally via an API, right? So that could be a use case. Whereas you might already have an existing relationship with that app partner, and you're now trying to build on that and solve use cases for your mutual users. That's when you come up with a partner API, which is like a hybrid between private and external APIs, right? So all that I'm trying to say is we got to start looking beyond uh, the traditional mindset that we all have and start looking at what we could do with APIs. Start looking at um, tapping into uh, the data, right? The potential that we could have with data is immense. You might start wanting to monetize on it. And that's where you've got to start looking at uh, APIs from day one. So it's not, it shouldn't become a part of your development process but rather start looking at it as a strategy. 
before I move on, I just want to give you a, a example where we ended up in this situation. Um, I worked on a monolithic application, which also had exposed some of its functionalities as an API. And it was a suite of products. So one of the offshoots actually uh, was trying to solve a particular use case. And for this use case, we had to expose the functionality via an API. And we did it, right? But this is a typical example of where you are exposing a functionality of an um, by an endpoint of an existing API. It's it's an, a typical example of an afterthought. Why do I say that? It's already a monolithic application, very tightly coupled. You've got to start looking at, you know, decoupling this rather than adding to an existing API. You are going to make your migration to microservices or any type of architecture even more complex. So have, start thinking from day one and have a mix of people to help you get onto the same journey. So I'm going to build on to the previous one. So this particular myth where we are saying APIs are technical solutions uh, and not products. Why do we say that? Often I've seen this uh, myself and I've, I've had the very same idea too. We first first point to note is that we look at APIs as technical solutions simply because our end user is a developer. Next, we do not have a UI, right? The next point to note is we are trying to solve a use case, a typical example that I gave in an existing product. So it could be very tightly coupled to an initiative. The next one could be, when I say rally used, uh, I'll give you another example. Um, so in uh, one particular scenario, uh, one of the companies that I was working with, actually, uh, we entered into a strategic partnership uh, with an app partner who had a base, a global base, and we were looking to enter into a new market where they had a firm footing. And um, the reason that we already had a strong foundation, we were actually trying to get better at it. And in all, and in, on top of that, we were also trying to maintain a very cordial uh, relationship with this app partner. And so we would started to build a few endpoints um, for this local region that we were in. And without actually giving too much thought into whether this is the right thing to do. So what happened eventually, uh, we didn't kick off very well in the new market simply because this app partner business was not running at its best and um, there was low adoption. So these endpoints that we built for the local region were a typical example of, you know, just looking at it as a solution and not as a product and building it just for one app partner in mind, right? So you've got to really start changing this mindset because building such endpoints or APIs, you can be sure that you're shuttered for low adoption and that's not what we want to do. Right. As much as we stress on, you know, having those partnerships, which will open up new business channels and those business needs coming in from your different developers, you've got to rethink and always question yourself if you are doing this um, API development as a part of your strategy or you're trying to, you know, just build that relationship with a particular a partner, or is there something beyond all this which will align the whole organization together? Um, and that comes down even to your engineering team. So the key takeaway here is ensure that you have a mix of people. Um, and mix of people, I would say, have technical and non-technical folk. Because what is missing out uh, here is that we do not have a product mindset. And that has to change, right? So consumer-facing applications, customer-facing applications, which have a UI, web UI, we, we tend to look at them as products. But this, when it comes to APIs, it is kind of uh, niche um, and it is still emerging. And so the mindset hasn't changed, right? So ensure that you get everyone uh, on board when you start on your API journey. The next one is um, API development cannot be agile. Okay, so a typical waterfall approach goes like where you get your requirements, you design, you develop, you test, right? And um, we often think when it comes to API development, can we actually be agile? Can we change the way we actually uh, work? Because no, uh, the other different ID projects that we work on, we're not waterfall, we become agile, right? But that's not the thinking when it comes to API development. I've most most often I've seen um, 
in the past when you're starting on your first API, um, you would wait to flesh out requirements completely, get that contract up and running, you will start writing your code, you'll finish it, you'll have a fully, um, uh, you know, a very sophisticated documentation, which will then be given out to your um, end user, which is your developer. And that's that's uh, you, that's too late because you're getting that feedback uh, very late and there's no um, engagement with um, your partners as well. So this has to change um, and you've got to start getting on that agile journey as well. So we need to adopt the API first approach. And when I say API first approach, what exactly do I mean by that? When I spoke about defining the API, the contract, we need to ensure that you had these chats in early days with your stakeholders, with your app partners, with your uh, development team, engineering team, and flesh it out, get that feedback um, in whatever shape or form. It doesn't have to be perfect, but ensure you've spoken about all the different verbs, the protocols, what is it that you're actually expecting to get out of this, get as much as possible early days, right? And then you could go about, you know, designing that contract. You have um, tools like, you know, Open API, which is going to help you actually get that spec out, right? So leverage off those tools, design the contract early, get that feedback early, engage them, and uh, have these discussions um, iteratively as well. Okay, the next one, um, AI and APIs. We often, uh, I've noticed this, um, we are skeptical to talk about artificial intelligence as much as artificial intelligence is um, being used in almost practically every industry, right? But if, when, when it comes to APIs, we are still not on par. And where is it that we could actually uh, use or leverage a AI? Now, from my experience, I've seen that there is a very traditional way of uh, security testing that we do with our APIs. And um, as much as we might have all the tools in place, there is scope for human um, error, system error, and that's where you can use artificial intelligence, right? So you might want to use tools which will have, um, which will understand what the good flow of traffic is, what's the, um, the not so right flow of traffic looks like, with there an anomalous behavior in the traffic, you'll start understanding those usage patterns, right? You might have decoy APIs to help you with that. There are tools like Ping and Intelligence, which will help you do that uh, uh, traffic intelligence monitoring. And so you'll start understanding the usage patterns. So think, um, at least have the discussion, right? Uh, don't rule out the fact that you cannot have AI and APIs go hand in hand. The other topic that I want to actually touch on is AI usage monitoring. Um, and this applies in compliance and heavily regulated industries that I've worked, um, I've worked in the past as well as currently. We go through a very rigorous um, assessment of the different app partners. We uh, check um, from all aspects, right? Whether it be uh, compliance from the regulatory bodies or whether it be just security assessment as well. And once we get to understand the, their use cases, what their usage is going to be like, um, we enter into that agreement with them. And then we get to a point where we uh, everything looks normal. And what could happen, a typical example that I could give you is, you might see uh, the usage calls or the API calls actually going uh, really high. And that's probably not something that you may have been expecting or that's not something that you may have agreed upon. Right. And how do you know whether this is uh, this looks right or wrong? Is this legitimate? Right. We do not reassess all these app partners who we work with and we do not actually know whether um, that's normal traffic. So you've got to start understanding these um, uh, usage patterns per API basis. And that's where you need to start looking at algorithms have picked on um, unsupervised learning, which will actually help you to um, create clusters and you'll see you know, patterns as to, okay, this particular uh, type of API for this app category seems to be accessing um, these APIs or endpoints at a higher rate, right? So an example could be, it might help your marketing team, sales team to understand that, um, um, or to understand the profiling of these APIs based on their app categories, right? So look, look at different aspects of uh, 
usage monitoring, security testing, where you can use AI. APIs are not user-centric is another anti-pattern, and I touched on this a little earlier. We usually think of um, our uh, customers as end users, but we never think of our developers also as users in this case. So you need to start looking, uh, having that uh, empathy towards our developers and involve them. How do we involve them in the design phase? If you're, you're building an internal API, perfect. You do not have to invest much. You build, have your PLC, you bring your own, um, right, maybe you write your own client and you can test it, or you can get your internal team to actually uh, write a client and test it out. Do not give them any documentation because that's the best way to actually um, understand and get that feedback, right? And, and you're not losing much because it's an internal team. But this approach cannot be taken when you are working with external stakeholders, external app partners. You've got, and if you're, you're lucky if you've got um, investment, um, the time and resources, you can do it uh, on a large scale, be very collaborative, and get together with them and have you know a typical uh, design process in place, collaborate and have that uh, those different sessions with them to define and test and see them um, write their uh, clients as well. And keep repeating this, keep iterating throughout this process. And once you uh, ensure that you've got it in place, and that's when you, uh, you will start thinking about scaling and topics like API portals, explorers, all that would come in only at that stage. Do You do not have to invest in uh, API management tools upfront when you are still testing the water. Right? APIs are cruddy, and I'm going to rush here because I think we might run short of time. So often, the idea is that uh, it's always crud, uh, and this is with new developers. Um, but keep in mind, it's not all about REST. You might have um, async. You might have events. Um, now it's uh, gRPC, GraphQL, webhooks, HOS. You have uh, you have device APIs, so you might have your uh, Fitbit, and you might be writing something. Uh, so there are different different ways in which you can write APIs. So do not have this typical CRUD approach um, and explore, right? Explore beyond, go beyond REST. Um, as we all often know, that things change. REST replaced SOAP, and now it's uh, altogether different. Uh, API scene. APIs are black boxes. Um, key point to note here is ensure that we have a lot of uh, data that is locked, especially in the compliance space. We should be careful not to lock any uh, PII, any uh, personal information. Ensure that you have perfect response codes because usually the easiest that your developers would do is have 5xx codes, which doesn't help us, neither would it help your app partner as well. So ensure that you have all your error codes in place, ensure that you have logs. When it comes to you know, security breaches and in the compliance industry, you've got to ensure that auditing can happen at any time, so they shouldn't be black boxes. Finally, APIs cannot be hacked. This is a fundamental um, problem that I have seen in most teams. OAuth 2 and TLS are more than enough. And uh, that might be the base or the foundation. But if you look at the OSI uh, layer, there are different layers. You've, kind of, you've got to consider security and uh, uh, risks that could occur at almost every layer. And even before the, it comes into engineering, you've got to be careful when you choose your app partners. Go with a mindset that you trust no one so that you, are, you make that extra uh, attempt to ensure that your end users um, are confident uh, with the solutions that you might come up with along with your app partners. So in short, take every step, get the security team uh, involved early days, right? And not at the very end. And I'd like to end, um, I'm not sure if you will hear this, but um, if I play this, you might just hear that um, the talk saying, uh, Tronka saying that if you've got an API, you've got an API, uh, and I'd like to end my talk on that note, and I wish you all the very best in your API journey. Thanks, Rose. That was that was good, and thanks for your Tom as well at the end. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you couldn't hear, but uh, yeah. So just just following up on your uh, uh, talk, um, I have one question. Uh, how do you influence your business or other teams who just see 
APIs as an afterthought based on your experience, like the mindset move from APIs as just an interface to APIs as products? Yes. So um, we've learned it the hard way. Um, and that's exactly what I am trying to avoid. So I do have um, cases where um, historical experience has taught that having an API in your latter days of your development or as a solution is not good. So what we tend to do is we do have a playbook. We do have a playbook where we have all these different endpoints that we've written and what is the reason that we came up with this endpoints. And we've also mentioned that we've deprecated some of them because of the low adoption. And that's where they are, they are typical examples of technical solutions. So there are various different retros that we've had. So we've logged like um, all this and we've come up with a framework or a template and some questions to ask when we go through the product management life cycle, right? So we start with a typical um, understand phase. That's our part one, where we are trying to understand what the problem is. When we're talking about that phase of understanding what the problem is, um, and then we move on to the next play phase where we're defining the problem, that's exactly where we start looking at whether it should be an API or whether it should be a solution. So that's where the, uh, the questioning and the talks would happen, rather than when it goes from the definition to the design, delivery, nurturing phase. So we've like brought that well in advance, so we at least ask those questions. So that's like um, the best way to you know uh, shift your mindset. Yep. Um, and this is very challenging when you are starting your journey. Yes, definitely. That's good. And another question from uh, from the chats here: If you fail to document the API for the internal team, doesn't that put up? quite a barrier for usage with that team and lead to project failure so yeah just to um go go over what i spoke a while ago i wouldn't say that we shouldn't have documentation um i think what i was trying to convey is a cheap way for you to test your contract is not to have documentation but to rely on the discussions you have had just to test it out to understand whether you're on the path but that being said, once you've gone through that phase of just getting this feedback, you definitely need to have documentation, even for an internal team. And we do that. We do that. I still have internal documents uh, for our inter for all the uh, internal teams, and our documents are different for our external teams, right? So um, I wouldn't um, encourage that. But that is good to do when you are still in that early days of having those talks with them. Cool. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ross. Uh, and uh, it was uh, thanks. Wonderful for sharing and breaking all the myths uh, about APIs. Looking forward for more such stories in other API days conferences. Thank you. Lovely talking to you. And uh, thanks to everyone who's uh, been listening to me as well. See you around. Goodbye. <laughs>